Hey guys, Igor here and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be covering a Procreate update which came out about a week or two ago. This one adds some highly requested features from the community, so let's get into it and see what we think, shall we? And the first thing we're going to take a look at is some of the new distortion and warping tools. If you go ahead and click on the little arrow cursor button up top, you can see along the bottom we have distort and warp added. So now with the warp feature, you can bend a 2D flat drawing kind of like a piece of paper if you imagine. You can you can bend it or warp it as the name suggests to have a kind of curvature, you know, your piece might might need it could add a little bit of movement if you move in from the center you see the whole thing moves uh, as well, the center kind of controls the the heart of the object and from the outsides you can push you know specific points these these little intersections you can spread them out we can give it a fisheye look really really cool addition and I think it will make things like applying textures over a a piece of armor or something like that a lot better so let's go ahead and undo this real quick alright so moving on to the next feature if we click the little wand under adjustments you will find liquify so now along the bottom we have a toolbar for all the different ways that you can liquify a piece if I push it around you can see we can stretch stuff out if I want to reconstruct or undo what I just did you just go ahead and rub the brush everywhere and it goes back to normal we can twist clockwise and you can go counterclockwise as well if you go ahead and overdo it again reconstruct will undo everything back to the way it was you can obviously also pinch as well as expand so we can give him huge eyes without messing up most of the line art which is actually very very handy and then you can make all sorts of fine adjustments to the strength you can reset everything back to normal obviously change the pressure and size and that is the new liquify feature pretty great stuff now the next really cool addition and this is probably my favorite one of the update is if you go under canvas and enable drawing guides previously this is where the perspective tool was added but along the top you can see you have the 2d grid option isometric and symmetry now isometric is a really cool way to create assets for a game or a board game or even you know a children's book and I'll show you what that might look like so here we have the isometric tool enabled and as you can see I use the guides to create a very boxy car so let's go ahead and disable them for a second I'm gonna create a new layer that isn't assisted by it and then I can do things like add tires here in the guide I've added a steering wheel but if I want it to be more round I just use the approximate shape of the guide and make a little bit of changes and then overall after drawing out the exact shape that I want I can go ahead and start erasing some of what's underneath giving me a very accurate representation of what this would look like in a 3D space so let's go ahead and re-enable that and I'm gonna show you what the isometric tool looks like for example let's go ahead and create a new layer enable the drawing assist and give him a road to go to go along we want there to be a little bit of a curb then you can skip a couple of squares and draw the other side of the road we can even do a sidewalk so every little square will have its own section for the sake of the video I'm not gonna spend too much time on it I just want to give you guys an impression of what how this handles we can do a fire hydrant everything is very 
very boxy like this, but it's great for drawing buildings, for creating just really, really, really basic shapes that you can later build on top of. So the fire hydrant itself would need to have a round top, but that's something that you do after you disable the drawing assist. And now, as with all other drawing guides, if you draw a line and hold the button, uh, hold the end of the tip for the line, it'll turn into a straight line that's not connected to the guides. So if you need to draw some specific angles and you want to use the guides afterwards, that's one thing to consider. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that as well as the little thing we drew on top. And we had another drawing guide to play around with and that's symmetry. Let's go ahead and create a new piece for that so that we've got, we've got a new fresh slate to start with. So going back to the drawing guide, hitting edit. For symmetry, if you look along the bottom, you have all these cool tools that I'm not sure if I've seen other programs use. I haven't messed around too much with other drawing programs uh, when it comes to things like this, but you have the horizontal option. If we hit done, anything I draw on top will also be added to the bottom. And then if you cross over, it'll just switch. And as you can see, you can create very intricate patterns super quickly. You can draw faces and you can create little things like horizon lines and you know water reflections or something along along that. Circles, squares, what have you. Okay, so let's undo this. Again, the layer needs to be assisted in order for for it to follow these guides. Vertical, again, is great for drawing faces, but in real life, if you're trying to do something realistic, uh, the human face isn't super symmetrical, so that's something to consider. So let's say something like the ears might be there, right? You could have the eyebrows along with the eyes, the nose, you get the point. <laughs> Looks a little a little creepy, but this is the one that I haven't played too much around with, and that's quadrant. As well as the next one, I'm looking forward to try the radial. So as you can see we can create those little I don't remember what, what it's called, the little crystal crystal tools. So we can also overlay over what it is we have currently currently done and just to make sure that I'm not missing anything if some of you would be asking to try some color here that works as well any kind of color you want it'll blend just like a regular painting what's nice is now you're only focusing on you know, one eighth of the painting instead of the whole thing. Everything else is just being copied over. So it's pretty great for for multiple applications that I can just think off the top of my head. And that is, for the most part, all of the drawing related features that have been added. As you can see, there are a few other there are a few other options that we can play around with at the bottom which show the thickness of the line and its opacity so if you need the guide to show up through whatever it is you're painting you will have the option to do that rotational symmetry I think has to do with being able to to rotate uh, your guide I'm not even sure but seems like it 2d grid now we have a little base grid for being able to draw floor plans. So if you're an architect, you know, this might be something that that interests you or if you're planning on creating, you know, some sort of Dungeons and Dragons map or whatever, this is a great great tool for that. And let's look at the final feature, shall we? So the final feature that's been added is gesture controls. They further increased the amount of control that you have. Uh, under preferences, along the bottom of the tab, you will find gesture controls. If you touch that, here you see you have a whole array of options to choose from. Everything from how the smudge tool uh, is selected, 
the eraser, things like assisted drawing, quick menu options where you're able to have access to things like uh, horizontally flipping a canvas or undoing or redoing or creating a new layer. Everything is kind of sped up if you get used to these controls. I don't really like to use gesture controls outside of the two finger tap to three finger tap to redo. I know that they've changed some of the settings where four finger uh, does something aside from hide the canvas so I guess that's customizable as well. Uh, so I like to keep it basic but I'm sure you can if you're unhappy with how the app handles I'm sure you can find something that works for you there. So that has been update 4.1.2 for Procreate. Honestly this app just keeps getting better and better very few problems that I've had with it in the past uh, I think have been resolved. Things like crashing or uh, I don't know any sort of weird glitches uh, which I have not ran into too much of. I know the phone version Pocket Procreate still crashes for me every once in a while but this this thing is solid so I hope you guys check it out uh, it's still just as good as ever. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments maybe I'll do some sort of art related challenge where I'm using some of the new features and uh, thanks for watching have a good one